Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're going to be looking at a rifle that is from a brand that you guys have been requesting quite a lot. That rifle is the Zebroia or Titia. This one is in 177 and we're going to do a thorough test on the rifle today. As you can see we've got the chronograph here so it's not only can we test the power of this particular rifle and consistency but we can also test the shot count which is something that I'm sure we're all pretty interested in. Uh, if you've looked into these online you'll see there's not that much information or at least official information as to what these rifles can do. This is the short barreled version of the Hortitia and this is the standard Ukrainian barrel as I thought it would be interesting to see what they can do straight out the box. There is a Walther option but again we all know what the Walthers can do, they're a hell of a barrel, so I thought we'd get out the standard Ukrainian barrel and see what's going on. So then, that's enough of me rambling on. How about we move on to features of this rifle, and then we'll go into handling, and then we'll put it through the chronograph and see what it can do. Then after that, as per usual, you can see we've got our target set up just around there at our 27 yard mark. Got a bit of a different setup today, we've got a bit more high tech once again. Sky's the limit with Big Dan's air guns, but I'm sure you'll see a bit more later on. Um, but yeah, let's move on to features and see what you get with your Hortizia. Starting off at the rear of the rifle, you've got the rubber butt pad here, which also has the manufacturer's name stamped back there. Just about make that out. I do apologise, I'm stretching around just a little bit at the moment. You've also got this rather nice red insert put in here, which definitely helps it stand out a little bit more against other guns on the shelf. What I will mention is that this one is the right-handed stock. As standard, they don't come with an ambidextrous stock like you might see on some other PCPs, but I believe you can get a left-handed version, but it definitely it has to be requested, I think. There's not that many of them available at the moment. Moving further along, you've got the two-stage adjustable trigger there. The trigger itself, I've got to say, I'll go more in-depth on the handling section, but the trigger itself, I've got to say, is ridiculously good. <laughs> that is a really nice trigger, but again, I don't want to say too much at the minute and spoil it, but it is an adjustable two-stage unit, so you can tune it pretty much any way you want. Just in front of the trigger blade, you can see we've also got a little brass safety toggle right where you want it, where you think you can get a hold of it. Another thing that sets this rifle apart from the rest, which again, when we get to the handling section, we'll talk more about it, you might be able to see there that this rifle doesn't use a traditional bolt. This in fact uses a straight pull system, but again, I don't want to spoil too much, we'll go a bit more into that later on in this uh, review. You've also standard got a Weaver or Picatinny style rail on the top there, which they're good, but they can be a slight nuisance, as not everybody has Weaver style mounts to go with their scope. Um, but again, it, it, they are, to be fair, they are technically better than a traditional dovetail rail, you won't get any creep or anything with these, so fair play to Zabroya there. Moving even further afield, you can, you can see we've got the air cylinder here, and also in here the rifle does come with a regulator. Now, as mentioned, we do have our chronograph, so we're going to test that regulator a bit later on and just see exactly what it can do. What I will say is that the air reservoir isn't particularly huge, to be fair, if you can see that in the shot, in the whole shot there. It's not a particularly big reservoir, so it'll be very interesting to see just how much air and how many shots that reservoir, that regulator sorry, can squeeze out of it. And in here, you can see we've got a fully shrouded barrel. As mentioned, this is the 177 version. We've got a fully shrouded barrel here, which is also baffled, which again, we'll move on to handling, and I'll show you just uh, what that sounds like with the baffles in there. But overall, it is a... It, well, it's fair to say it's a very eye-catching rifle. I can see why these are starting to uh, get a bit of popularity now, because they are a stunning thing to look at. But that's it for features. Oh, no, wait, no, it's not. Another standout thing. You've also got two mags, as standard, which is another very nice little feature. You don't get that with all rifles. I know you do with the Artemis P15 and things like that, but a lot of PCPs out there, you only get the one. Another thing worth mentioning is, as you might have been able to tell from the mags, um, with this gun, the action cycles the mag. The mag, as you can tell, doesn't cycle itself. But again, we will move on a little bit further, into a little bit further detail with that when we get into the handling section. So overall, features-wise, it's a pretty impressive rifle, especially one even at max SRP, around the £500 mark. You're getting quite a lot for your money already. And let's be, let's be honest, it doesn't look like a £500 gun. It looks like it should be a £700 gun. But anyways, that's my opinion. Looks a subjective. So... We'll move on now to handling and see just what this feels like when put to the shoulder. Let's move on. So then, first things first. Before we can test the handling and such and how the gun feels when firing, you really kind of need to load it, don't you, to be fair. 
Thankfully, loading the Hortitia is a very, very simple affair. Although, there will be a word of caution that I have to give in a moment, but we'll get to that in a moment. Loading the mag on the Hortitia is as easy as anything. First off, you're going to want the teeth facing left, like so. As this is the way, the way the rifle works is you have a cycling arm that bites into these teeth, and as you can see my fingers spinning it now, it spins the mag like so. Pretty typical on a lot of PCPs where the action cycles the mag. As long as you know that, it's simply a case of putting the pellets in head first, like that, making sure they're seated correctly, like we can see here, and you're pretty much ready to put it in the gun. However, one thing I will show you about this, see first things first, safety is on. When loading this into the gun, you want to be careful because, and it's the only niggle with these rifles so far, you may or may not be able to see that. Let me just tilt it just a little bit for you so you can pick it up. Can you see the cycling arm in there? It's the only potential issue with this rifle. Admittedly, you have to force it to get it to cause any issues, but that cycling arm is quite thin. So if you slam the mag in, just jam it in there sort of thing, like we all do it occasionally, you, it's natural sort of thing. Um, but if you slam the mag in, there is a very, very slim chance, admittedly, but there is still a chance that you might straighten that cocking arm out and so it won't grip on the teeth on the mag, it will just simply graze against it and that's it, and the mag won't cycle. So once the mag is loaded, it's simply a case of putting it in, like so, and just gently, you can see just pushing against it there, you can feel it biting into the cocking arm, cycling arm, sorry. That's all you need to do to load the gun, just make sure again, just put it in, you haven't got to be ridiculously gentle just don't slam it straight in sort of thing if possible see if you can roll it in like what you saw me do just then then after that obviously make sure the barrel's in a safe position yep seems safe enough and then simply close the bolt like so and then you're ready to rock and roll so then let's see what this feels like when it's actually put to the shoulder so then handling how does the whole TTA feel when it's put to the shoulder for a compact gun, it's actually really, really solid. Um, one thing I will say though, uh, I do apologise you guys, you did ask me um, could I weigh the gun, give you an accurate weight, and I do apologise, but um, I haven't got any scale set up yet. <laughs> I do apologise about that, we will get some set up and we will start weighing all guns in our reviews. Uh, I can give you the official weight for these though. The short barrel, which is what we have here, the 177 short barrel, are 3 kilograms, and the extended barrel, we believe, are, well, what I was told was around 3.1. So you can tell they're not a particularly heavy rifle, but for a rifle this size, you can see that it's, it's beautifully weighted as well, sits perfectly, or just this rounded bottom, so it's hard to hold completely still. But if I just hold it there like that, you can see it's pretty much spot on. If I just, just to prove a point, if I slide it back, you can see the arse end goes down, go there, the front starts dipping ever so slightly. Um, but for a small gun, three kilograms, it's actually a really nice weight to have on the gun. And it just gives the rifle just such a solid feeling when it's put to your shoulder. Don't get me wrong, it's still, I know three kilos, like I said, it might be slightly heavier than some other guns within this sort of size range sort of thing. But it gives the gun a really solid feel, but at the same time I can still maneuver it really well. I mean, you could use this as a target gun or you could use it as a, a walked up hunting sort of rifle. Um, it is a really nicely designed thing. The other thing I want to show you is just how this thing cycles. What we're going to do, just safety on. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute. You know what I'm like with my safeties. If you can see that, I do apologise if you can't, there's a little toggle here. And what that is is because this is a straight pull and not a bolt action. So instead of going your traditional bolt up, back, forwards, down, or if you've got a Super 10, up, back, down, up, forwards, down. Um, silly design. But with this, you simply pull this lever out on the side here, and you can see it releases the bolt. And with that, you simply pull the bolt back, push it home, and that's it. It's a really nice system, and although it feels a bit alien before you get used to it, it's really quite fast to use. Once you've used it for a while, you can take shots as quick as anything. This is another reason why I say it make a superb hunting gun. Because, say you've got a couple of different, and there are situations where you have this, I've had this before, but as somebody who used to hunt with a HW97, you don't really, sometimes you don't have time to get a second shot off if you have that second rabbit sitting there, and, um, well, he's long gone. I mean, that thing's like loading a, a, a blunderbuss sort of thing compared to loading something like this. But it's quick, because you can just pop, and then click, click, pop, off you go again. It is a lovely bit of kit, it really is. 
Right, safety. You know I like these. It's right where I want it to be. It's not an automatic unit, but let's be honest, if you add that on a PCP, that would get slightly annoying, I think, over time. Uh, but it's right where I want it to be. The other thing I really like is it is a metal safety as well. A lot of guns, even in, I do apologise, that aeroplane is quite loud. Um, even guns that are more expensive than this can have either a plastic safety or something like that, which doesn't really do it that much for me but this is a nice little safety system here the only thing I'd say is I wish it was just a tiny little bit longer because at the minute and you can see there pulling it back isn't an issue but pushing it forwards can be a little bit more hassle again to be fair it is a freezing cold day today look at the gloves um, and it could be that that's just making it feel a little bit harder than it truly is but again like I say no guns perfect I try to be as honest as possible so if I find anything like that that I think huh wish that was a bit longer I'm going to mention it. Right then, the trigger. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Let's just give this a, a quick go. You can see my finger there. Let's give it a quick squeeze. That's nice. That's really nice. There's a little bit of first stage travel there. And then the second stage is sort of like a, a little bump sort of thing, like a lot of the lighter two-stage triggers are. You can feel the bump there and then just push it forwards and off she goes. It is really nice. I will say... Again, you know if you've watched my videos, I like a lightweight trigger, and that is a really nice... It's it's perfectly safe. It's not dangerously light. You can easily back off of it. <clears throat> but the one thing I will say, um, if you like a heavier trigger, again, it is adjustable, but you might want to adjust it. It's most of the time, this is straight out the box, and most of the time out the box, that's what you get. You do get, uh, with these, it is usually in the 177 a lighter trigger. Um, so again is adjustable but for out the box trigger in my opinion that is gorgeous so then that's handling oh no it's not one other thing i just want to show you which is quite a nice idea i know there's a few guns with this setup but to fill the ortizia the fill port is covered up by this little shroud here which has the um which covers up the also protects the air gauge as well but it's simply a case of unscrewing it like so and you can probably you might be able to see there hopefully you can just see it's opening up the um the fill port in there. Unscrew that straight out and then, well not straight out, but unscrew it so as you can get your probe in there and then when that's done, simply screw it back in. Brilliant system. Look, uh, there's a saying that I really like and that's keep it simple stupid and that is pretty much bang on. It keeps it absolutely thoroughly protected when you're done, just tighten it up like so, not too tight and there you go, job done. But it keeps it nice and protected, it's simple to use, what more could you want? That's it, but, but no, regarding handling, it is a phenomenal rifle, and that trigger, as you can look online as well, it's not just me saying this, a lot of the reviews with the triggers, they are superb, even straight out of the box like this one is, is top notch. I'm looking forward to seeing how this translates into accuracy. But now we've got to move on to the, well, it could be untested grounds as far as I'm aware. Let's move on to shot count, because there's not much information, as I said earlier, as to what these can do. Again, we've got the regulator in there, so it'll be interesting to see what that's capable of. But as you can probably see, the air reservoir is not that big, to be fair with you. This is the short barrel version, but you can see the air reservoir is not that huge. I mean, it's probably around air arms, maybe S410 sort of size, to be fair with you. And, you know, shot count of them was about 50 shots per fill, I think. I'm not sure. Around that area, I'm sure you guys will correct me. Again, I've, I have owned one, but it's very, very briefly. Um... It comes with a left-handed stock, <laughs> which we'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm a righty, as you can tell. Um, lovely gun, though, when you could see through the scope properly, when you got used to it. But um, air cylinder is not that much different to that, so we'll compare it and see what this can do, sort of thing, and see exactly what the gun's capable of. So we've got the, as you can see, the chronograph, as what I might have shown you earlier. We'll get that plugged in, get this rigged up. One thing I will say, max fill on these guns is 300 bar, and you might notice if we just look down at it there, we have had about, say, eight shots with it already anyway. And um, that was basically, we just had one then. And I'm not going to lie to you, uh, I had a couple of uh, slightly dodgy takes earlier. I'll put it that way. We've had um, airplanes and such going over, cars and even a few tractors going by. Again, working farm, what can you do? Um, but yeah, we'll get the, re the chronograph rigged up. And let's see what this regulator and air cylinder are capable of. Let's get the chronograph in. Okay then, so chrono time. I've got to confess, this review took a lot longer to film than I thought it would. 
You can actually thank the weather for that. We originally started filming around late January time. It's now, I believe, February the 18th or the 19th. Can't entirely remember. Do apologise about that. Yeah, we have had absolutely dreadful weather. You can see we even had a bit of rain last night. There's a few little puddles and such down there. And the wind was absolutely atrocious. Um, but yeah, you may notice that there's a few little differences around the farm now. I think there's a lot more wood back there than what there was um, when we first started filming. But yeah, we are now ready to chrono and crack on with it again. We've got the chronograph all set up. We've got the rifle there with its two mags already. We're going to be using for the chronograph a pellet that's not really spoken about that much, but they actually seem pretty damn good when I've tested them. The Rifle Premium Series Superbox pellets in 177. They're 8.33 grain. And yeah, I thought some, I'd do some testing in a moment when we get to the accuracy section. We'll put a few of those through and then we'll try the, uh, we've got a ton of JSBs and Air Arms Diablo fields. We'll put through there and see what, it can, what the uh, Zabora is capable of. So yeah, enough jabbering. Let's crack on with the chronograph session and let's see just how many shots you get out of a Hortizia. There's not a lot of information about this online, so I thought, uh, why don't we do an actual practical in the field sort of test and see exactly what one of them will do. So then, let's move on. Right then, so, chrono results. First off, how many shots do you get per fill with a Hortizia? Well, this one was filled up right at the uh, 300 bar mark, and as you can see here, power begins to drop by about the 144th or 140th pellet. After that, you can see it does start to drop off a little bit more sharply. But even so, it's still not bad. A lot of guns, what can happen with some guns is that the power actually spikes before it drops off. It'll come up and then just dump the pressure pretty much straight away. With this, it's actually, although I said sharply a moment ago, it's still reasonably gentle. You could still get accurate groupings with those shots there. But again, we're being honest with this and we all wanted to know, there's not a lot of information about this at the moment. Uh, yeah, you get around 145 full power shots per fill from the Hortizia. And this is the short barrel version with the shorter air cylinder. There is, you can get the extended barrel, the extended cylinder. Um, and again, with that, it probably wouldn't be too unrealistic to say you'd be getting say 160, maybe 170 shots per fill out of it. But at the moment with the short barrel, um, short air cylinder version, I'm well impressed with those results. When it comes to consistency, again, the numbers are looking a little bit out of whack here. Um, but, like with the spread, 49 feet per second, but obviously we've had the pressure bleed off and such here at the moment, so it will be, it'll be registering that and taking that into account. When I was shooting it, uh, again, you'll be able to see it through the footage, I believe the max spread was around 25 feet per second, I think, before the pressure started bleeding off, which is pretty damn good for 145 shots if you know what I mean, before that starts happening. And the standard deviation was, I believe, only around 4.9. It was in the high fours, feet per second, throughout that entire shot band until the pressure started dropping. That is absolutely stunning. Again, especially as already mentioned uh, earlier, this gun's still pretty much brand new. You can tell the scope's not, a little bit dirt in there, but this is our, our trusty Milbro. Um, this is pretty much brand new rifle, the barrel hasn't been cleaned in the slightest or anything like that and it's only going to get better when it runs in and that is the really really exciting thing about this because again, for it's had a few shots through it, it's had probably like I say probably about 
100 pellets, so say 200 pellets with these going through, and it's still very much so going to be leading in. So if it's only going to get better and it's already doing this, that is something to really look forward to. So that's shot count and consistency out of the way. Next up, we've got some pellet testing to do, and we have a rest. So no excuses for terrible accuracy this time. What we're going to do, we'll have a mag full of each of these and we'll see what the rifle's doing with these pellets. Again, you can see here we've got the JSB Exact Diablos, we've got the Air Arms Diablo Field Pellets and the Rifle Premium Series. Um, we'll see what it can do with these. I'll show you the groups. I'll walk you over to the range in a second. As, as mentioned, there has been some slight differences between when we filmed this to begin with and filming now. And then after that, when we find the best pellet for it, we'll put a few shots through with no rest and just me holding it. So. We'll see just how the rifle handles when it's being held normally by a sort of normal person um, and see just how good that does and just how potentially badly I do with it. So, yeah, that's all fun. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on to the range and get on to accuracy testing. Okay, so here we are at the range. Unfortunately, as mentioned, we've got this rather large... Makes a great backstop though, but we've got this rather, rather large uh, dump of wood behind us here. So unfortunately I can't get the target quite so far back as what we had it before, so we're not running at 27 yards. We're pretty much, I mean if I was going to be greedy I'd say we're running at about 26, but if we're being honest, we might as well just keep saying 25, there's next to nothing in it if I'm honest. So yeah, we'll say 25 and a half or 25, 25 yard mark. Um, first pellets we'll put through, we'll do the rifle premium pellets. We'll do that from a rested position, and again, we will be right over there. Oh, there, somewhere. I can't really see the sun showing on the GoPro, but we're out there somewhere. So we'll get a few shots in, a full mag with that, see how that compares, and then next, on, next up, we'll move on to the next tin of pellets. But the first thing I've got to do is I've got to pump it. This is something I'm not looking forward to. So I'll get this pump back up, and then we'll commence with the, uh, yeah, the target testing. So then, uh, let's get pumping, I guess. Next up, Air Arms Diablo Field 4.52. Next up, JSB Exact 4.52.
Right then, accuracy results. How did the Hortizia do? Now this is the standard barrel Hortizia. This is not the Wolf of Barrel upgrade. I just thought I'd put that out there to bear it in mind. And this is also the 177 version. The first group was with, it was a full mag with the rifle premium pellets. I, I was interested to see what these can do because in testing just real quick the other day, they actually seemed to be pretty good. And they are pretty good. We had one flyer just off there. And although it's not a one hole cluster, they do all sit perfectly under a 20 pence piece which is nothing to complain about there. So I will be interested in our future reviews, I might include these with it just to see exactly what they can do. Moving along, our second group was with the Air Arms Diablo Fields and these did not fare quite so well. The interesting thing is, if you look, there's actually two groups on the go. Although that is torn there, um, I think that's actually an after effect of me putting it in my pocket, as you can see, there's a crease going through there, so I do apologize about that. But there's two groups, so whether there's an issue with, um, with this tin in particular, maybe a couple of pellets were misshaped or the wrong weight perhaps causing that difference, I don't know. But they're too tight groups, but they are still two groups and they're not really going to fit under a 20 pence piece. So I think this might be our third position. First, by a long shot. Look at that. That makes that five pence piece look absolutely huge. And that is a full mag through there as well, a full 13 shot mag. That is ridiculous, that really is. But now we've got to do the same thing unrested to see just how the rifle feels when actually shooting when it's put to the shoulder. So let's do it then. 25 yards, unrested. There's our target, all prepped and ready. You might not be able to see it because that bar in the way, but there's our target just over there all prepped and ready for us. Let's take the JSBs and do 25 yards unrested. Here we go. So then, 25 yards unrested. How does the rifle feel when shooting, not using a rest? Pretty good. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that looks a bit messy at the minute, but bear with me. With a bit of pushing my luck, I can almost get the main cluster of that group under a five pence piece. The other thing to bear in mind is there is three shots here, admittedly, but we are using a, a 13 shot mag. So you've got 10 just under here, and only three of them down here. Looking back at here, that's 25 yards of the JSBs rested. We can both say that it is definitely my fault why these are moving around. Um, I do usually, I'm usually quite proud of the way that I shoot offhand, but I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I have been shooting quite a few spring guns lately, and I've not really been touching PCPs. And yeah, it might be that that's throwing me off a deer a little bit. But at the same time, let's put 20 pence there. I think that's probably more realistic. I mean, 20 pence piece. That's pretty good, and it's not exactly that still today either. If you can see that up there, there is quite a little bit of gust getting around here today. But yeah, overall accuracy wise, I don't think anybody can complain about the Zabroya Hortizia. And that's with, again, as mentioned, standard barrel. That is absolutely superb. Like I said, it makes that five pence piece look huge. With someone who actually knows what they're doing, you could probably get that with that, but unfortunately, uh, it's. I'm barely uh, any better trained than a trained monkey, so yeah, you've got to uh, make do with what you've got, I'm afraid. Right then, and with that, let's move on to the final verdict. So then, Zabroya Hortitia, final verdict, what do we think? Well, first things first, I think it's possibly the most one of the most unusual looking new rifles, PCPs even, to uh, hit the market. It's not often that you see this sort of grey ash stock on, and well, not entry level, but on a, a, a cheaper end air rifle. Um, SRP or RRP for these is around the £500 mark, and to be honest with you, even at that, 
normally you'd expect with some companies either a bit of, bit of beech or something like that just a normal brown bit of wood but with this you get that lovely grey stock which really stands out from the crowd overall the metalwork on it is superbly finished as well and I really love that um, straight pull action again it, it's, it's something that really breaks it apart from the competition accuracy wise I think we've got absolutely no complaints whatsoever as you can see there that's rested again 25 yards with JSPs and that as I've already said multiple times already look how big that five pence looks in comparison to it it just eats that group it really does so we've got absolutely no complaints there and again that is with the standard barrel Shot count wise, we did a bit of an experiment, like we do do with our reviews sometimes, get a bit of information out there that some people like to know, and that is with shot count, and with here we've got 145 shots until the power really bled off. Beyond that, as you can see here, as we go down, you've got 146, it drops to 766 FPS, 763, and then beyond that it goes down to 750, 740, and it just drops from there. So around 145 full power shots is what you're getting from this, which is, to be fair with you, as I mentioned earlier, Look at just how small this gun is, really. It's not a big gun in any way, shape or form. This is shorter, I'd say, than the cylinder Artemis M16, and yet the shot count is right up there with it. It really is, to be honest. You know I like to say, no gun is perfect. There's Every gun has got a flaw. And I suppose what I could say with this is, again, you've got to be careful when loading the magazine. The cycling arm is quite thin. And so if you jam a mag in there, it's going to straighten the arm out and it's just going to, it's going to rub the side of the mag without biting into the teeth of the mag. So there is that you have to look out for with the gun. Um, the other thing, like I said, uh, admittedly we have got that huge scope on top, but it's not quite as light as you might think it is. It's not a heavy gun by any, any sense of the imagination. I'd say it's probably... It's heavier than an Artemis, but it's lighter than... I'd say it's lighter probably than an air arms and things like that. Um, I'll put it to you this way, that if you compare this to that Artemis um, M11 that we reviewed, the Mark II M11, you'll find that this is considerably lighter than something like that. But again, if you're a bit of a, a featherweight sort of thing, or you don't, you really don't want a, a gun with even the tiniest bit of heft to it, you're looking for something like a PR900, uh, this might make your arms a little bit tired over time. But other than that, I'm really nitpicking to find a problem with this gun. I really am. The trigger on it is absolutely superb. Out, this is completely out the box, so I haven't tampered with this at all. And it is so nice and light and crisp, it really is. It's, it, it's almost like you think shoot, and it shoots. Again, I know a lot of people might not like that. You'll want a bit more of maybe a, single, a first stage to it, um, and a bit slightly heavier second stage perhaps. But again, it is an adjustable unit. You can put that on there. I'm really, really struggling. Um, I suppose unscrewing the filler cap here, having to actually unscrew it can be a little bit tiring, but again, is that really a, a negative? I don't really think it is, if I'm being honest. I do apologise if I'm rambling a bit, but it's just, it is a brilliant little gun, I've got to be honest with you. And again, for the price, I'm quite confident that group would be competitive with, with rifles over a thousand pounds. I've, again, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Um, this is just pure speculation at the moment, but it doesn't get much better than that, surely. 13 shots. And this one, that was the last shot. That was almost non-existent. If that last shot wasn't in, it would have been more like that. But we had one, you still couldn't really call it a flyer, but we had one that went a little bit wide there. But overall, final verdict of the Zabroya Hortitia, it gets massive thumbs up from me. It really does. It is a phenomenal little bit of kit. These do also come in the long barrel uh, variants, which have, as mentioned, the extended cylinder, so you get a slightly better shot count with it. And you also get the Wolfer model, which comes with the Wolfer barrel uh, and such like that. Um, it is more expensive, but it does also come in a walnut stock compared to the Ash. If I'm being brutally honest, I've got no problem at all with the Ash. You can get this in the brown Ash stock as well, which we do also stock, but... I've got to be honest with you, this is my favourite stock that they that Zabroya uh, get in. It really is stunning looking and it stands out. You put that against a load of other PCPs on the shelf and that is the one that your eyes are instantly drawn to. It really is a lovely, a lovely bit of wood and a lovely bit of craftsmanship. That's it for this episode of Big Dan's Air Guns. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you want any more information regarding air guns, feel free to get in touch with us at bigdansairguns.co.uk. 
and uh, leave a comment down below if you want us to try any other air rifles that are on your mind we'll see if we can crack on with it and uh, see what we can do next up we've uh, we've got a choice I'm not quite sure which one we're doing next it's either the we've got a Norica Storm that was very kindly sent to us by our friends at Regale uh, the importers for the Zbroja Hortizias and uh, the Kozaks and we've also got the standard air cylinder Artemis M16 which is sort of our range slave that we let people come down and try put a few shots through and see if they like the M16 or not so yeah leave a comment down below if you've got any preference between those two we'll see what we can do and if there's any other guns that you'd like us to test uh, yeah we'll crack on with it see what we can do thanks ever so, ever so much for watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>